Hello, and welcome to episode eight of the Infinite Pass Log. As always, it's me, Ricardo. And me, Todd. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Dark Souls. Woo! <laughs> now, uh, Dark Souls is a weird thing. Um, we have a love-hate, more, I have more love. Todd's got a little bit more something else uh, relationship <laughs> with the game. <laughs> Uh, it's it's an odd one for me, man. Like Demon Souls was a huge love love thing for me, because mm. um, it was a different kind of game. It was my kind of art, like dungeon crawler style RPG. I love that sort of hard stuff. Um, I ended up playing Demon Souls like New Game Plus Nine, I think it was, and I was like solo four hundred and thirty something, and like seven hundred and twelve was like the highest you could get. Mm. So obviously that had a boatload of hours in. And then Dark Souls came along, and obviously it's day one purchase, really excited for it, but it just didn't have the same appeal to me. Um, I don't know, like, I think Demon Souls was much more structured than Dark Souls, but then Dark Souls has this wonderful thing about it where everything is connected. So it's, it's sort of a, it's a hit and miss thing. I love that, but I also don't like it, because it hasn't got the accessibility that Demon Souls had. Well, for me, it's a, it's it's very weird. Um, I did play Dark Souls. I'm um, not Dark Souls. I keep getting it confused. I apologize in advance. Um, I did play Demon Souls back when it was released on the uh, PlayStation 3. I rented it, so I didn't get a renting a RPG is a bad idea. <laughs> you never have any time to really uh, experience it. But um. I played Demon Souls. I, again, I didn't have much to get a grasp on it. Uh, I didn't touch Dark Souls until the PC release. So at that time, it was what? How many years? Uh, it was only about a year. A I year? Think. Really? I thought it was. Yeah, because like, that was when they did their foot, like the big patch where they nerfed a load of stuff. They had a patch not long after release, which didn't really do a lot, and then they had that big one before the DLC came out. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got it around the PC release. I thought it was going to be a fun game to stream because it's a game, you know, prepare to die. I think that was in its uh, PC release title. Or, uh, no, it was, yeah, it's prepare to die edition, right? Yeah. yeah. So I got it as a game to stream and I fell in love with it. I loved everything about it. Um, it was a game I constantly streamed for like a couple months and I was... I was just loving it. Um, much of my game experience was through the chat. So people were suggesting things, what I should do, what kind of weapons I should use. Um, it's actually because of you, Todd, I always go for the Claymore, which I love. Um, but Yeah, I only um, I never really discovered the Claymore until like people in my stream were going on about it after I'd already played the game like twice. Mm. It was just a weapon I never really sort of tried. And then it actually turns out to be really good two-handed, so I, I sort of end up loving the claymore. Yeah, which is weird actually, because you suggested the claymore, but I played almost all the game with the claymore being one-handed. Um, but yeah, much of the game I, I streamed. Um, eventually, I stopped streaming for a little bit, and I played the game over again with a new character and beat it uh, at least like two or three times after that. Um, See, so I remember when the game came out. Because I loved the game, I was looking forward to it so much. I pre-ordered the because when you pre-ordered, you got like the more sp you got like the special edition with like um, it's got something with it. I think it's got like an art book with it or something. I can't remember. So I've got the special edition on both 360 and PS3. And the guy in the game just looked at me like when I went in with my um, pre-order ticket. He was like, "What? You want both?" He was like, no, he was like, oh, so which copy do you want? I was like, both. He was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I've pre-ordered them, give them to me. <laughs> and uh, I remember I came home and I streamed, like, for four or five days it was. So I booked the whole week off work to play Dark Souls. And literally the first day I got it, I was up for 18 hours straight streaming Dark Souls. Literally had about five hours sleep. And then streamed another 12 to 14 hours of Dark Souls, like the next day. And it was just literally a day after day of me trying to get through Dark Souls. And I must have got through about three different characters because my builds were all so shit in the first, like, 
couple of attempts because obviously you don't know what you're going no. into, do you? When like you're going from Demon Souls to Dark Souls, it's, a, it's all completely different. The weapons are different. You don't know what's going to be good, you know. So I ended up like burning through about two characters before setting on one, yeah. and even then it took me about 55, 60 hours to finish the game. And I'd already spent about 40 hours on shit characters as well, so it was just ridiculous. I spent so much time within a week on Dark Souls. It was insane. Yeah. Uh, but coming from the guy who doesn't like Dark Souls as much. Hey, I don't like Dark Souls, it's Demon Souls, but that's, <laughs> that's not really a big deal. Uh, <laughs> but you see, for me, because I played it so much before the DLC yeah. and the patch, I've got a completely different experience to Dark Souls than you yes, do. Yes, this is completely true. So they nerfed and changed a lot of things at that mm -hmm. time. I mean, the big things that they changed was, you know the ring of invisibility you get in the forest covenant? Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, you uh, never used to be able to lock on to people that were using it until the patch where you can then lock on to someone who is using it. Yeah. Um, um, there was also the the biggest thing in the patch was before the patch, uh, which when the DLC came out and the Prevent Edition, uh, if you had under 50% equip um, load, you could fast roll. And then after the patch, it was down to 25%. So you had to lose a lot more of your armor to deal with that change and everything, especially if you're doing PvP. You had to change all your PvP builds. It was a nightmare, and that's what stopped you from playing PvP. That's what took me out more of the community, and that's what also led to me stopping playing Dark Souls. Mm. If you know what I mean. I know what you mean. I, again, I never experienced any of that. I played it PC day, not really day one, but I got it like on sale, and I yeah. played it. See, I got it day one on PC as well. I, pre-ordered that <laughs> coming again from the guys like oh i don't like all these patches and then you just buy that one because i think the uh yeah but i i was gonna get the dlc anyway mm -hmm. and i got the pc version because <laughs> i already had the other two versions so i just bought the pc version instead of getting downloaded the dlc on the console so it's the complete set okay <laughs> yeah um i think we should go on to the uh game now the actual game not our personal opinions yeah. about it <laughs> yeah uh well still opinions but more into the game. Um, you wanted to talk about like the introduction, right? Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, you start off in where is it? Uh, the Undead Asylum. That's it. The Undead Asylum intro, I think, is really good in terms of the basic mechanics of the game. Mm. That's what you expect to go into. That's fine. Um, I love the trick with the Asylum Demon. What trick with the Asylum? That is. Making you think you have to fight it when you have nothing, having to run to the door to the left instead. Oh yeah, I remember that when I first screamed. Everybody screamed at me. No, don't fight it. Don't fight it. Actually, yeah. you can if you equip the uh, black bomb as your gift. Yeah, but it still takes a couple. Of no, it takes like five or six. Yeah, which is fine. But then it's a waste of the gift. You want, you need the key. You need the key, and this is what's going to link on to the rest of it. <laughs> the master key is the best thing to start the game with. Uh, well, there's only one reason you want the master key, to be fair. Um, basically, when you then go to Dordran, it's Dordran, isn't it? Yeah. And you get to Firelink Shrine. This is what kind of threw me with Dark Souls, especially coming from Demons, playing so much Demon Souls, is that, that when you're in Firelink Shrine, there's one, two, three, there's like four or five different ways you can go. Yeah. And that's quite disorientating anyway, because you keep going these different ways. Some of them you can't even go because they're blocked. And the rest of them you go in and you just get slaughtered. Yeah. And there's only one actual way you can go right at the start of the game, really, like with the equipment you got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that put a lot of people off at first that were like, oh, this game Dark Souls coming out, like it's meant to be really hard, it's meant to be a really good RPG, that's got loads of good reviews. And those of you who bought the game and then like a lot of people didn't play it because of that. Yeah, they would get up to the Firelink Shrine shrine and usually go to the graveyard. Um Yeah. I went to New Londo, right? Is that the underwater area? That's where yeah. I like thought I had to go. 
I literally went everywhere other than the way you had so, to go until last. I didn't. I kept going to Lulando and everybody's like, no, go, go up to the Undead Parish. It's up that way. I'm like, I don't see it. I never saw it. Um, it's such a small path up the cliff, though. Everywhere else is so much more obvious yeah. than that. It, it, to me, I never... I don't see the Undead Parish like entrance as like, oh, this is the way you're supposed to go. The game... Yeah. I mean, the game does point you in that direction, but it's really hard to see. It looks like the cliffside. Yeah. Really. But just the game points you in that direction. It's a Souls game. It doesn't mean that's where you're meant to go. <laughs> that's true, but it's also like the very beginning of the game. Almost yeah. everybody goes that way, um, with the exception of I don't know if you know what I to do. I tend to explore, so I explored the area for the pickups and items, and then obviously you forget which way it started you, so you don't actually know which way you were facing or where to go. Yeah. Um, but like. This is why the reason you, this this might be some spoilers, but everyone's played it. And if you haven't, then well, it's your own fault. Uh, especially if you listen to this. <laughs> um, the reason that I say you have to start with the master key as well is because, as much as I love the world of Dark Souls and that everything is connected so well, mm. it gets quite tedious and there's it takes a long time to travel between areas until you get fast travel. So you want the master key to skip one of the worst areas in the whole game, Which, and you know what that is. Uh, Blight Town? That's the okay. one. Okay, because I know there are a couple Lag skips. City. Yeah, that's the biggest one to skip. Yeah. Um, the other one is what you can do after you've uh, done that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the two big skips, so you have to go fight the Asylum Demons to get the first bell. And then you have to go down through New Londo and then down, um, take the keys, go down towards Blight Town. Um, and basically, what is Blight Town lags really badly when you're going down through and it, so it's really important to skip yeah. it, as obviously you know. And this so way, that's why uh, this is also through all platforms. The PC version is not any better, Xbox, PlayStation, does not matter where you play it. No. Doesn't matter where you play it, Blight Town is still laggy as hell. There's some great equipment. Oh, there, yeah. But you're better off going through it later on when you've got like better stats and equipment because then when an enemy hits you that shouldn't, you're not going to die. And good poison resistance yeah. is a good idea as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, mostly armor that allows you to like take poison. That's what you really need. Seriously. Those guys with the, the spit in the arrows at you, man. The poison. The there's only two. Shit. Well, no. I'm, I'm... There's a toxic and there's poison. Yeah. There's only like two toxics, but the rest of them are poison. No, actually, there's like five toxics. They're around a uh, firekeeper's soul. But that's that's crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the worst one. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst bit. But they they are actually spread throughout Blight Town, just shooting at you like from across the mm -hmm. way. Like, they There's yeah, there are just style. those two. The one, the one at the very yeah. beginning. If you go through the way, the game sort of wants you to go through. Like if you go through it naturally, yeah. and there's one farther down, like in the middle. Yeah. Um. But then all, after you've done that and you've beat the boss at the bottom, um, there's another skip you can use if you join the covenant mm -hmm. of the sister. And if you give up 30 humanity, she'll open the shortcut for you to be able to go through and skip the whole of the, un you know, the underwater, underground lava area. Yeah. Yeah, you can skip that. Oh shit, I didn't know that. You you know later on where you find um, some bro with the, um, like, you know, he tries to kill Yeah, kill the sunlight you. magnet. Maggot. Yeah. Well, if you enter that covenant and then before you go to fight that, that fire demon boss go off to the right and go down through the shortcut door you don't have to fight the fire demon mm -hmm. and also you can kill all the maggot things and get the hat and everything then he doesn't ever he doesn't show up there later i don't think no yeah i i played the game with a guide at one time and i think it did say something like oh if you do that i just i, I forgot about it oh. yeah that's that's like the two big bits man mm. that's crazy so good Damn. i love i love that i love that's what i really like about uh dark souls is the the world is very very well designed um 
And there's so many little bits, little tidbits to it, and little things hidden. Yeah, and like the how it how it transitions to like a, a medieval castle to like a decrepit spider-like cave. It's, it's crazy. Oh, I know, and stuff like Ash Lake. Ash Lake. I never actually got to Ash Lake. Didn't you ever go to Ash no, Lake? No, I. That's the oh. only spot I've never been. That's how you join the Dragon Covenant. I know. And with that as well, um, I, how it's hidden is amazing. Because when you go, you have to go down to the bottom of Blight Town, to the, the lake at the bottom of the Poison yeah. Lake. Um, literally, where you fight the boss, whether I think it's Quaylag Shrine or Kulag, however you say that name, I don't have a clue. I don't know, I always say Kulag. Um, you literally, when you leave out of there from like where you went, the way you enter, just walk all the way to the other side and you'll see a massive tree. Yeah. You go in, there's a chest and a wall behind the chest. But if you hit the wall, there's another dead end wall. And you have to hit that wall as well. So there's like two walls and you're like, oh, like you sort of destroy one and think, oh, there's nothing there. But then there's another and you're like, oh, wait. That's there. that's a pretty good secret. Like, good way to I know. It. And then you keep going and it's just really twisty vines. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of items hidden throughout. There's like those giant mushroom enemies that you get in the forest yeah. um, on the way to Sith. There's like those kind of enemies. So yeah, like it's it's really interesting, and there's another hydra down there. Too. I know that. I I know what is there, but I've never been there personally. It's very oh, weird. it's so nice. It's really weird though. There's like nothing there, but it's so out of place. Yeah. As well. Um, don't you get a hint to it in the uh, Tomb of Giants, like towards the end of the Tomb of Giants? Yeah, when you before you go to fight. Um, Oh, what was his name? Shit. Pinwheel? No, it's because it's after Pinwheel. Oh, Nito. Before you go to fight the... Yeah, Nito, that's God, it. I love that name. I know. Um, yeah, it's before you go to fight Nito that you can see over what is like the same as Ash Lake. Mm. So, I, I think I've read it somewhere. Like, I haven't actually... I can't remember all the lore stuff, but I think what is meant to be is like Lord Ran is actually the new world which is built up on top of the trees so Ash Lake you can see all the trees sticking up and you can see it from there before you go to fight Nito um, down that way you can see sort of all the blue water you sort of see these trees and everything sticking yeah. up so I think it's I don't know whether it's just a theory or whether it's actually lore I don't but I remember reading somewhere like the world is built on a tree hence obviously even when you're um, in the lava place there's the tree of life is it tree of life boss to boss I, really I don't know thing. I don't remember. There's that tree boss, and all under there is all there's all roots and everything underground. Everywhere you go, there's always tree roots. There's the trees in the by Quaylag Shrine as well. There's all those trees in the underground there, and obviously the trees go all the way up through um, Blight Town too. Yeah. So it's a very big link of like that throughout the whole game, and that's where's the theory of like the whole world of Lord Ran is, is built. On mm. that. Yeah, I don't know. For me, the lore, the lore theory. I I know there are bits of lore here and there, but I think it was it, it's mostly fan uh, theory to me than it is like the developer actually like, hey, this is what we it really intended. No, I think it'd be more what they intended. Like, there's a lot of lore in Dark Souls. There's lore on every weapon. There's uh, lore yeah, on every. I item. know about the weapon stuff, but a lot of the you know, I don't know. like like the the tree thing is kind of item. a weird thing. It's not really, if you think about it. Mm. Like, everything's, like, so many places as roots. Yeah, I know. You explained it really well. It's just, it's just like a... Yeah. I don't know. And when you fly over at the start of the game, you can just see trees all around Lordran. Yeah. Can't you? When you're flying over on the, with the crown. Yeah, or from the Firelink Shrine. Yeah, to the Firelink Shrine, I mean. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's it's an, it's interesting. I, I enjoy it. Again, I'm the guy who doesn't like Dark uh Dark Souls as much. No, in comparison to Demon <laughs> Souls, it's not as a digestible chunk of gameplay. It feels much like more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is good in a certain way. I mean, Dark Souls is my most like played game, though like 150 hours clocked in. Probably a little bit more from times I played it offline. I don't think Steam keeps track of yeah. that. But let's continue on to like the combat. Not much change from yeah. Dark Souls, like from Demon Souls. So it's kind of more more or less the same, right? Uh, yeah, more or less it's the same. I think they improved like two hand a bit more or something, but I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. I never really did it. The other thing they improved as well. I say improved. The other thing they added 
is the like like so you do your yeah. push and your kick or with sort of like your really light weapon you sort of do that agility backflip thing. Yeah. That's really the biggest difference is I think between Doom Souls and Dark Souls. Other than that they with you they did with all the weapon upgrades, they had much more different mm. types of weapons. So yeah, that's that's the big thing. Well how'd you feel about it? Like to me it was a little bit like I liked it. It got it's it's different from most RPGs and most action games because everything's controlled with the triggers um, and the bumpers, depending on what you play. I mean, it's designed in a way so that you have full access to the whole yeah. control at all times. Like when you're because you're fighting with your triggers essentially and you know, shoulder buttons, you've always got both hands on the sticks to move around. You can still heal as well as like hold your shield up and stuff. You can still do everything you need to do while moving. Yeah. You can control the camera while you're attacking, you can do anything because it, it leaves it very open to you. Yeah. I actually never thought about the camera thing because if they use the face buttons, they have no control of the camera, even with a lock on. Yeah. Still, oh, wow. That's actually pretty crazy. I yeah. never thought that's, about that. That's why it's a really good system. I mean, again, I enjoyed it. I have no problems with its uh, like stamina and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But it's, it's one of my favorite RPGs is Dark Souls, the first one. Yeah, think of it like a shooter. Mm. You always have to have your thumbs available. It's that kind of thing. That's really crazy. Well, on top of the combat, uh, the combat is complemented with almost all the boss battles in the game, really. Uh, funny enough, while recording footage for this podcast, I beat the Bell Gargoyles all by myself. What do you mean all by yourself? You never I by never yourself. did it by myself. I always used um, Solaire. I used Latrec once. I always did it with a uh, buddy. Because I just couldn't handle, uh, I don't know why I couldn't handle the, uh, the two of them whenever they show up. But I actually did it all by myself. Well, on the way there somewhere, I can't remember where, but you find the stuff that imbues your weapon with lightning. They're like super weak to lightning. Oh, are they? If you two hand whichever weapon you're using, use that whatever it is on your weapon. Just before you go in, just before you start, like, trigger the fight. Mm -hmm. You can kill them in, like, five, six hits. Damn. Actually, I never did that. I, I, I did it straight on yeah, with my they're claymore. They're super weak to lightning. Huh. The gargoyles. That's crazy. And you should have two or three of those, that item, yeah. when you go into the fight. Yeah, the re uh, the gold pine resin, I think it's called. Yeah, that's it. But uh, almost all the boss battles are really great. Um, the only ones I don't really like it are the uh, the tree, that tree demon thing. Yeah. What else? What What's really funny is that tree, I found I didn't have ever have any problems with it when I first played the game. Yeah. And then... When like I get start getting like when the game no, when I sort of played the game again a few months later and people started watching me play it like more on stream and stuff, mm -hmm. then everyone was like, Oh like, you know, you're gonna die on this, like it's the easiest thing ever but you will die and then what started happening? Oh, I started dying. <laughs> it's just crazy. God what other bad bosses are there? Like um, like? I wouldn't say it's bad, but the cat redeeming is what most people hate because it's in such a restricted area and you've got the two wolf dogs. You know like What's crazy what about that one is that when I played it, I played it on stream. Everybody's like, oh, you're going to die. It's going to be terrible. I beat that. I beat that demon, like, right away. After that, I, I never did, like, it, I never got it as easy. No, like, I remember, like, one time I just ran in and did it straight away without any issues. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll die, like, seven, eight, nine times. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that's the same with me. It, it all depends on how the dogs attack you right at the start and what attack he goes for. Mm. Other than that, you're golden. Yeah. But, man. but that is the hardest part, killing off the dogs before you can really fight him. The one of my favourite bosses is the boss that gets missed when you don't go through Blight Town, and it's the Gaping Dragon. That's a cool boss. And that's wise. what everyone forgets about. That boss is amazing. It kind of looks like a giant vagina, but it does look amazing. I think that was the point. I don't think there was yeah. any hiding that it, it's a giant dragon vagina. Yeah. That boss was so awesome though, man. I loved it, and I still do, and it's a shame that it's in the place it is, because I rarely go and fight it. No. <laughs> Last thing that we should talk about, things that we've both, both personally done. Uh, you've done something incredibly crazy. The way no, it's not. <laughs> not. No, 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 no. These days, that is not. I'll tell you some things if you didn't know what some people have done. Well, the game but is very good carry on. with um, putting self-challenges. Um, it's... The, 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 it's very freestyle in its game approach. You can go out at it any way you want. Um, 
I've done like very low level uh, playthroughs. I've beaten a couple of the bosses at level one just to try to compete with you, but I'm not that crazy. I'm not going to beat the whole game on level one. Yeah, but I technically haven't. I did. I've done all the main game bosses mm. uh, at level one. I think I even went and hunted out the cat, uh, the gaping dragon to do so as well. I did Artorius on the DLC, and what was the second boss? Uh, I don't. Remember. There was four bosses on the DLC, wasn't there? Right. Oh no, the very first one is the um. Oh, what was it? As soon as you enter the I know, DLC, it's, it's the like boss. it's a line. The Chimera. Got... chimera. Yeah, it's the chimera. chimera. Yeah. Um, I did the Chimera and Artorius when I got down to the third boss. I can't remember his name. Manus. Manus. Manus yeah. There. Yeah. Um, I couldn't beat him. I tried about a hundred odd times. I seriously just could not do it on level 1, and obviously, because I couldn't do that, I couldn't do Dragon either, so I kind of failed big time on that. But, there is a guy, I don't know if you know about it, but there's a guy who's beaten Dark Souls with the Donkey Konga drum controller. He's beaten it with the Rock Band drums. Guitar Hero controller. I remember the Guitar Hero controller. I, I heard about that. Yeah, he's. It's the same guy who's done it with the Rock Band drums and the Donkey Konga drums as well. I think the Donkey Konga drum should have got more news than the Rock uh, Guitar Hero controller. Because that's insane. The, I think he did the Guitar Controller, Guitar Hero controller one first. Oh, okay. But yeah, he's he's pretty insane. I never. I the Konga drums. Thing is, the reason the Guitar Hero controller got so much more press is because there's a lot less buttons on it. Yeah. Um, which is why it kind of had more appeal. Yeah. I don't. How did he? I'm guessing he moved with like the uh, thing you used. No. Like, what? No. D-pad. No, that was. No. He basically had like an. He set up one thing for like run. I think it was, mm -hmm. and then he could, he set it up so you could turn in like certain degree increments either way with like certain button presses that's insane so you'd have to keep pressing a button to like turn so much one way <laughs> and like stuff like that that's it's insane ridiculous. now i'm I've guessing watched, i've watched uh, the fight against uh what was the fight nano londo i don't know i don't remember Bornstein the smell oh yeah yeah yeah, I've watched this fight of that against them with the Donkey Kong drums and the Guitar Hero controller and the Rock Band drums as well. Now I'm guessing he used like the lock on most of the time, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, because if you said no, he didn't use it at all, my mind would have been blown. You can't talk, really. You can, you can, you can definitely fight these things without the lock on. You, you're the one who taught me that. Is oh most yeah, fights. lock on. It's good not to use lock on sometimes. Yeah. I'm probably gonna link that in the uh, description just so people can see that like his channel yeah no definitely have to pretty much out of time here thank you for listening <laughs> yeah thanks for listening to me rant about dark souls and uh we'll see you guys next time thank you very much